regular alkenes and dienes react in very similar way and they also have relatively similar physical properties. Now, we discussed the concept of conjugation of dying. So we said conjugation is basically the overlap of atomic or molecular orbitals between the second and third atoms, carbon atoms, inside 1,3-dying. So we said that conjugation is a stabilizing effect and it influences, it affects the physical and chemical properties of our molecules. Now, in this lecture, we're going to discuss an even more interesting type of molecule known as the benzene molecule. So, benzene has a special type of conjugation, and this basically places it into a new category of a new category of compounds known as aromatic compounds. So, these are compounds that we're going to discuss in greater detail in a future lecture. In this lecture, we're simply going to introduce the benzene molecule and discuss its reactivity as well as its structure. So let's begin by taking a look at the following three reactions that we spoke about already. So we examined the hydrogenation of our dialkene. So basically our 1,3-butadiene, if it is reacted with H2 as well as a catalyst, we produce the following alkane. Now we also said that if we take this 1,3-butadiene, which is conjugated, and we reacted with an HBr either in low temperature or high temperature conditions, we produce the following two products. So the 1,2 product and the 1,4 product. And most recently we discussed the deals all the reactions. So basically the combination of our 1,3 butadiene and our dienophile, our simple alkene, in the presence of some type of temperature, some amount of energy, we produce a cyclohexene. Now, benzene, which is also a conjugated system, does not react in either one of these reactions because it's so stable. So benzene is unreactive because it is very stable. It falls into a category of molecules we call aromatic compounds, aromatic molecules. Basically, aromatic compounds are very stable due to the spreading out of electron density among all the orbitals within that molecule. And we're going to determine or we're going to discuss in a few Future lecture what determines an aromatic compound and what exactly an aromatic compound is. In this lecture, we'll simply focus on the structure of our benzene. So benzene looks something like this. So we basically have a cyclic six-membered ring that has three pi bonds as shown, and it has two major resonance structures. So this is one of those resonance structures, and this is the second one. And actually, the intermediate molecule, what benzene actually looks like, is the following molecule. We can also actually signify benzene with a six-membered ring and by drawing a circle in between. And that circle simply means, as does this dashed line, that all the electrons are basically delocalized among all these six carbon atoms. So the first thing to notice is that benzene is resonance stabilized and this means that electrons and the electron density will be delocalized among the six molecular orbitals of all our six carbon atoms. So basically, this is the diagram of the molecular orbital of our benzene. And notice that we have six blue lobes and six green lobes on the bottom. And so we have six 2p orbitals that basically overlap with one another on top and on the bottom. And these uh, orange uh, lines basically designate the fact that our electron density basically moves about in the following direction on top as well as on the bottom. So 
we know from quantum mechanics that whenever our electrons or electron density is allowed to occupy a greater volume, a greater region of space, that basically stabilizes the system by decreasing the energy of that particular molecule. And that's exactly why our benzene molecule will not undergo the hydrogenation reaction in the presence of H2 in a catalyst, but this cyclohexene will because this cyclohexene does not have this conjugation that our benzene has. So basically this will undergo this H2 with a catalyst reaction, but this will not because this is an aromatic compound. It's basically very unreal reactive because it is so stable as a result of the delocalization of the electron density among all those six orbitals. So basically we saw that all these six orbitals contain an equal amount of electron density. Now, since the electron density in benzene is spread out among all these six carbons, all these six orbitals, with an equal distribution, we might expect that all the bonds in benzene are identical, and that's exactly right. The bond characteristic in benzene is somewhere between a single bond sp3 hybridized and a double bond sp2 hybridized. So inside a benzene, we basically have approximately sp2 hybridization. So basically the bond length in benzene is somewhere between a single bond which is 147 angstroms and a double bond which is 132 angstroms and the average of, the, of those two values is about 139 angstroms. So the length of any one of these bonds between our pairs of carbons inside benzene is 139 which is somewhere in between a single bond and a double bond. So, once again, benzene is a very, very unreactive molecule because it's considered an aromatic compound that is a compound that contains conjugation among all the atoms inside that particular molecule. Now, we're going to look in much greater detail as to what an aromatic compound actually is. In this lecture, we'll simply mention that benzene is in fact an aromatic compound and that's basically why our benzene is unreactive. It's so stable and so low in energy that it will not want to react to break that uh, conjugation, that conjugated system. So basically if this benzene reacts, it will basically lose all these pi bonds, it will lose this conjugation and it will not be aromatic. And because that's not what it wants to do, it doesn't want to basically destabilize itself, it will not undergo any of these reactions. So it will not undergo the deals alder, it will not undergo the hydrogen Oxygenation, and it will not undergo the halide addition of reactions like these molecules will.